Friends, I wish to thank, greet, and welcome all of you who have come here to participate in this important gathering on the 10th anniversary of the publication of the encyclical Deus Caritas Est, and to share our reflections in uh, the very same place, this new Synod Hall, where the encyclical was first presented 10 years ago. Our Pontifical Council, Co Unum, is happy to be sponsoring this meeting. To facilitate our mutual acquaintance, we invited several groups of people, the members of Co Unum, the representatives of the Episcopal Conferences, the representatives of the Dicasteries of the Roman, Roman Curia, the ambassadors uh, to the Holy See, the representatives of the major Catholic charitable organizations. Our conference is also a place where we can get to know one, one other individually and enter into a dialogue. I warmly greet each and every one of you without the need to mention anyone individually. However, allow me in a very special way to direct a warm greeting on behalf of all of us to His Eminence Cardinal Angelo Sodano, Dean of the Sacred College, who greatly honors us with his presence. A special word. Thank you. <laughs> a special welcome to our friends from mainland China, for whom this Congress is the occasion to share in communion with the whole Church. When I presented the proposal of uh, a conference to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the encyclical to Pope Francis, he immediately answered yes because it fits in very well in this jubilee year of uh, mercy. And it goes straight to the heart of our initiative. Ten years have gone by, but uh, Pope Benedict's encyclical is still very fresh and young. Its message contains the essence of the Christian faith. Pope Francis himself reaffirmed this uh, belief during his visit to our Cor Unum offices last uh, February 4th, and in dialogue with us, he used the word brilliant to refer to, refer to uh, the encyclical Deus Caritas Est. Uh, brilliant, of course, a document that, that uh, sheds light, that offers light and guidance. We believe in a God who is uh, charity, caritas, in the inter Trinitary life, and is manifest as charity in the life of Jesus, the Son of God, who gave his life for us. This is caritas. This is the everlasting message. And the church can do nothing more than repeat it, generation after generation. And the church repeats it, announcing the kerygma. We have just heard a kerygma. And the church announces it with her, with her deeds. Uh, just as Jesus revealed God to us through his words and through his actions, uh, repeating Deus Caritas Es, and the whole great world of the service of Caritas in the church, the myriad groups and organizations and institutions and associations who work for the good of man on behalf of the church are the living witness of this everlasting message. And with their actions, they say to every man, of every era and in every continent that God is Caritas. And for this reason, the path to Caritas is, is the privileged way to the new evangelization which our world is so much in need of today. This is a core concept in the Christian revelation. 
that's so central that God himself is de defined as such. And it calls on the church to, to reflect in an appropriate way on this theme, starting with our, the terminology that we use that conveys our messages. When God reveals uh, himself as caritas, he is saying more than what we mean with the word love. And uh, the document, uh, the encyclical that has brought us here together today mentions this, descri describes this. And in my introduction, I would like to repeat what is said there, to frame our, our, our conversation in these days. Human uh, thought has formulated the concept of love, but not caritas. Love is human, caritas is divine. Remember in the encyclical the distinction that is made between eros and agape. Love desires what caritas can offer, but love on its own cannot, cannot fulfill that. Caritas, of course, is not in any way in opposition to love. But Caritas offers a love, a, love, a, a fulfillment that otherwise uh, love could not achieve on its own because God is Caritas, Deus Caritas est. Unfortunately, this is a distinction that is very hard to express in, in a good number of languages. Uh, not all languages can express the Greek word agape and the Latin word Caritas. However, I believe that it is quite obvious to us all that this, this feature of caritas is far too central to our belief to be overlooked or, 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 or put aside or simply neglected. The encyclical that we are reflecting on today has strongly motivated the service of caritas in the church and, and greatly um, pushed it forward for the very first time in history, a magisterial text of such scope was dedicated to this aspect of the church's mission, to give this mission new new strength, new energy, new, new lymph, new, and this is such an important ecclesial theme that we, we repeat it every day in our Eucharistic celebration. The second Eucharistic prayer in the Latin original uses the words ut eam ecclesiam in caritate perficios. Now, this is also very difficult to translate. And the, 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 the flaws, the inadequacies of translation make it harder to understand. Perhaps Spanish gets it best because it uses lleva la superficción por la caridad, leads it to its perfection through charity. We're not speaking of moral perfection here. We're speaking of the perfection of the church in that the church is fully herself. It's an ontological concept. But how can the church be led to be fully herself? Well, the way, the path is through caritas, uh, through the experience and witness of God's caritas. This is the way that the church can fully be herself, that the church can be fully fulfilled. And the more the church and through her members can serve the person as Christ, the more the church is herself and the more Christians can touch the flesh of Christ as uh, Pope Francis asked us to do in that uh, meeting in Coronum in the day and our daily dealings, our daily relationship with our brothers and sisters, the more faithful we are to what we are. And that is why we said it is such a central, such a primary issue. If uh, it is true that we pray that which we believe in, then we're also convinced that here we're dealing with the central pillar that really is the very heart of the life of the church. And personally, in these years working in Corunum, I've seen how many people have felt uh, themselves to be very directly and personally touched by the words of this encyclical. And the fruits of this encyclical are, are innumerable. Uh, innumerable and also impossible to calculate because the life of the spirit, of course, can only be measured in God's eyes. However, there is one 
fruit uh, of this encyclical that is very important for canon law, and it is the motu proprio, intima ecclesia natura, which a very meaningful way reaffirms the fact that the service of caritas is the very essence of the church. And what the encyclical uh, states at a theological level, the motu proprio expresses in its canon uh, language. It's very important to see that there are a number of open challenges in, in that document, the ecclesial linkages among the various works of charity, the choice and, and formation for that of, 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 of the persons involved, the types of financing, the administrative transparency that is entailed. In this, in this uh, gathering, we wish to reaffirm um, the, the importance today of the encyclical Deus Caritas says for the life of the church. It is a gathering that wishes to bring us together to then send us forth again to witness with our works the, the message of the Caritas of God in Jesus Christ. This is the reason behind the Congress. And now I'd like to briefly help us enter the spirit of our meeting. We decided to begin not so much with a prayer, but with a kerygma, with an announcing of the good news that was addressed to us first and foremost. This is not meant to be a strictly academic meeting. The, the message is that God loves every man. He loves me too. And I would like to thank Father Francis for his help in giving us this kerygma. Today's morning is dedicated together with uh, Cardinal Muller, the Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, who will be joining us uh, briefly. Um, the theological content of the encyclical. Um, Dr. Theo, the President of the Confer Confederation of the Societies of St. Vince of Paul, will, will, uh, will analyze how this text is uh, received and lived in the experience, his experience as the President of that large and important organization in the area of of charity works. And the experience that we'll hear today and tomorrow will help us understand concretely the message of this encyclical. In the preparation of this of this meeting, Pope Benedict uh, uh, wrote me a letter and in particular referred to the fact that we have with us today uh, representatives of other religions. And he used a, a phrase uh, referring to this fact. Uh, using words that I think very well capture the nature of Christian caritas. He said, these are his words, overcoming the frontiers uh, among religions is the intimate mission of caritas. Its essence is to make the goodness of God felt beyond all of our borders, all of our frontiers. No one is indifferent. Uh, to God. God wants to reach out to each and every human being, and already has, because the message of love is inscribed in the heart of man, created in the image and likeness of God, God who is Caritas. Today, in the afternoon, we will be looking at other uh, religions and also at the world in which we live today. And I'd like to thank, as of now, Rabbi Rosen and Professors Khan and Hajjaj, who will be illustrating each from their own point of view, this message of, of caritas or of love, relating it to the issues of today. And then, tomorrow, we will take a more uh, forward-looking approach and see what the contribution of the encyclical is today for the work that lies before us. Cardinal Tagli, who is the Archbishop of Manila, and also the President of Caritas Internationales. And his a theme will be this, um, this uh, approach from the point of view of the most uh, important and well-known Catholic confederation that works in the area of, of charity. And in the light of this encyclical, Caritas uh, Internationales has uh, been fully um, expressed, has found its full expression in its ecclesial mi mission. And then we've chosen two uh, topics that are important to give new momentum to our work in charity. The first will be the theme of anthropology. We have Professor Paolo Asolan from the uh, Lateran University 
Uh, and if we all agree that the human person is at the center of their service, we have to be clear as to what we mean by person and what person we want to promote. This theme of anthropology is uh, one of the most important themes. And we are certain that as Catholics, we can give an important contribution to guaranteeing, to uh, protecting the dignity of the human person created in the image and likeness of God. And the second theme is more closely related to the theology of Caritas. And it probably deserves more thought because often the ideal motivation of our work and commitment is confused with the social teachings of the church. But since the, the subject of, of uh, the uh, Caritas-related activity is the church, whereas the subject of social life is society, so too we have two different levels for our theological reflection. And I would like to thank Professor Gering from the uh, University of uh, Murcia in Spain, because he will uh, elaborate on this theme. And our reflection will also lead us to uh, moments of uh, Eucharistic uh, celebration. Uh, the masses will be presided over by two uh, presidents emeritus of Cor Unum, Cardinal Paul uh, Josef Cordes and Cardinal Robert Sara, who is currently the prefect of the Congregation for the Divine Cult and the Discipline of Sacraments. We, of course, are looking forward with great joy to the message that Pope Francis will address us during this, uh, during the meeting that we will have with him tomorrow. His uh, words will be a source of inspiration for our work in our daily practice of caritas that the service that we give in our local churches. This service is, is not uh, secondary. It is uh, the very essence of the life of the church and will become so more and more because the more secular our world becomes, the more it will need to, to, to have visible signs of the faith in Jesus Christ. I thank you as of now, and now would like to hand over to Madame Pastorelli, the President of Catholic Voice Italy, who will be moderating this uh, first session this morning. Thank you.